Collaboration is important to successful leaders, but somehow or another it seems to be difficult to get it established. So in this first of a series of conversations with successful leaders about important topics, we're going to explore collaboration. I am Dr. Michael Broom, CEO of the, the Center for Human Systems. My guest today is Lieutenant Colonel Jerry Hansbro. Jerry, tell us how you got to be a leader. Uh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate being invited to, to speak with you today. Uh, so I've been in the Army for about 20 years, and over those 20 years, I've been in leadership positions for 15 of them, uh, leading groups as small as three to five to as large as 400 uh, with, at various levels for it. So I'm excited to talk about this topic. Uh, leadership is my passion, and I look forward to helping share and discuss with you. So I was going to, to ask you if you enjoy being, being a leader, but if it's your passion, I suspect you do. But very, very much. It's one of the things that gets me excited is, is thinking about how I can work with somebody to make the world a little bit better in, in one tiny way if I can. Fantastic. Okay. So let's talk about collaboration. What makes collaboration important? Michael, collaboration is really the, the key to getting anything of substance done. Nobody's ever done anything of magnitude by themselves. It's about bringing a team together and achieving a common purpose. Collaboration is the method to do that. In times past, you know, uh, leaders just told their people what to do and they did it. But that's not collaboration, right? Yeah, I think that sounds like obedience yeah, would be what folks are looking for under that uh, paradigm. Okay, so what makes collaboration better than obedience? Collaboration builds buy-in. It gets a different level of commitment and it can actually bring additional creativity and energy into, into a team to better accomplish the desired outcome. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That sounds very, very important. Okay, so, so, so if collaboration is so, so important to get buy-in and follow-through and all of that, what makes it so difficult? Huh. Uh, that's, that's a deeper question, too. And I think it comes down to ego is a lot of it because mm -hmm. folks are uh, either afraid to ask for help or they're afraid to fully commit in something because there could be their own biases or perceptions of bias as I'm expected to be an expert in this and maybe I don't know everything. Or by asking for help, uh, I'm saying, hey, I don't need anything. I'm not good at my job. Uh, and that's, that's not really what it comes to. Co collaboration, you can, you can overcome those, those fears by uh, understanding yourself better. So now I've got two questions. What does asking for help have to do with collaboration? And what does knowing myself have to do with it? Asking for help uh, is... If you wouldn't need to collaborate if you could do it all by yourself. So asking for help is a way of acknowledging, hey, I need this skill set or I need this uh, assistance or perspective to come onto the team so that I can more holistically identify, refine, and uh, resolve a problem or come up with something new. So then collaboration, it sounds like, is getting something done together where people kind of multiply their brains with each other. Exactly. It's, if you think of a more of a sports analogy for it, if you're just uh, hitting a, a tennis ball up against the wall, you can get better, but you're not really going to get better until you're engaged with somebody else. And when you start playing with more people, you get the different angles, the perspectives, and you can collect more feedback about how the activity is progressing, how your skills are improving. So there's a selfish piece to it as well, because collaboration can lead towards self-improvement and you become better at what you are trying to do. I love that notion that the game of tennis actually is a collaborative effort. That's great. That, that's great. Okay. So, so then you talked about how egos can actually get in the way of um, collaboration. 
Can you say more about that? Ego is such a, a sensitive and delicate item, whether you admit it or not. So internally, you have your how you see yourself, and you have how you uh, believe others see you. And if your image uh, you think will be changed by asking for help or by saying that I'm not enough alone to solve this problem, I don't think that is weakness. It's asking for perspective to grow and you can become better and the desire to become better is a strength. One way I look at it is that to really collaborate effectively, we need to use each other's differences. Yeah. But if I'm hung up on my difference is better than your difference, then that's my ego getting in the way of us collaborating. Does that make sense? It does much more eloquently said. Well, you got me started though. <laughs> Super. Have you got a great story about collaboration, its difficulties, and how to get past those difficulties or something like that? So uh, collaboration and, and stories about it, it's, it's, you could look at it from essentially every day you are or are not collaborating, basically. Uh, so I tried to think about uh, where are things that have shaped my perspectives on collaboration. Uh, as stated, I've been in the, the military for 20 years. And uh, when I look back at early on as young Lieutenant Hansbro coming into his first leadership position, what did collaboration mean then? Did I even think about it? Because now I'm you know, 23 and in charge of 30 people, uh, potentially having life or death situations to it. So that feels very heavy. And I'm the, the leadership. I'm leading this organization. So I can't can't show weakness because I am the one who has to have all the answers as the leader in charge of this group, even though uh, every single person in the group has more experience in the group than me. Sounds like your ego, huh? Very much was something that I have to be strong enough and smart enough and fast enough to make all these decisions to make things happen. And fortunately, the Army is smart enough to put a person with 10, 15 years of experience as your right arm with this for the, the non-commissioned officer. And uh, that pairing is the basis of collaboration that, that really made me understand how this can work better. So the collaboration started with two, and then I realized, hey, this should expand to the squad leader roles as well. So now I have all the key leaders in this small organization coming together, having discussions. And it's not direction, you do this and you do that. It becomes, how can we do this? How would you do that? And that collaboration built trust within the group and made it so that it wasn't, I am doing this because I'm told to do this. I'm doing this because I believe in it. I have skin in the game. Part of me is vested in the outcome as well. So that's my early on story. I have a, another one I can talk about for when I actually did it more deliberately than, than that. So then you got past your ego issues by working with someone that was maybe a little older, a little wiser than you. Yes, yes. So now imagine you have a group now that you are leading. And the group just doesn't, well, or at least some people in the group don't want to collaborate. What would you do about that? So if, if the group has an established purpose, but they don't want to work together already, I, I think you have to pause and deliberately talk about why are you in the group? If you're here, that means you believe in the purpose, the outcome, or you're just here because you're told to be here. I guess you should be honest in the matter for it. But having a discussion about what is success for this project, for this group, what is it to you? How does success of this group better make you successful? How are you invested in it? That is the start of a conversation which uh, can feel a little egocentric because you are appealing to egos. Uh, but that's the start of the conversation to get the greater buy-in and commitment through a couple other actions. So that has to do with people buying into what is our goal for being here in the first place? Right. And then an understanding of 
we can only achieve that goal if we do it together. That's correct. And as that that basic understanding comes together, that's when you can look at the group and realize what are the roles and responsibilities with it. Because to collaborate, you need to understand what is it that you're bringing? What is it you're expected to bring to it? And then how can these items stitch together for it? Uh, if, if those aren't defined well, then people can start to uh, do redundant work. There can be work that's missed because I'm brought in for this piece, but didn't acknowledge it. And therefore I will do what I feel is appropriate. You need to have that conversation and make sure the lines of communication exist to uh, maintain that. Super. Okay. So, so then let's imagine that you've had that conversation with this team, mm -hmm. but you still got one holdout. He just doesn't want to play. Mm -hmm. What okay, do you do with it? Not uncommon for sure. I think having, uh, there's a variety of conversations and collaboration also has its uh, scaled challenges too. When you get to more than 10, 12 people, it becomes more difficult to get that full buy into it. So let's assume that you know, it's just one out of the 10 or so uh, individuals that's, that's not fully vested on it. So there's conversations from one on one with the leader of, hey, wh what's what's holding you back on this? There's an aspect to that. Uh, there's also opportunities to uh, go towards concurrence. Uh, concurrence is something that not a lot of folks have concurrence on what it means. Uh, but to me, the concurrence is, is it something that you're willing to support? It doesn't mean that you think that is the end all be all answer or action is the best way to do it, but is it something you can support? And if this holdout is able to say, hey, I acknowledge that that's not my way, not the solution I would pick, but I can get behind and support that. That's a way to bring the person in with, let's call it soft buy-in uh, towards, towards the mission. Then suppose he says okay, but then he still begins to behave the same way where he's just all doing his own thing. So this person here, yeah, there's there's two more, two ways that this can go. One, uh, you should have uh, some sort of formalized agreements saying, hey, you will commit, are you willing to commit to this here and formalize what that aspect is? Should the person not commit or not uh, follow through with those commitments, at some point you're, you're gonna have to uh, have a conversation that leads to that person leaving the team, being replaced in the team, or uh, something along that fashion. Not all groups work together with the team that's put in there, so you do have to make changes, although uncomfortable they might be. At some point, they need to put up or shut up. That's the bottom line, sure is. Sure. Bottom line, okay, super. Okay, so, so one final question that I'd like you to address. Can you imagine a situation as a leader where you would not want your team to collaborate? The only, the only reason that comes to mind, especially from the, uh, from the military perspective, is it is, requires immediate action, life or death, and a single decision must be executed immediately. If there's a time constraint and something that I need everybody to move to the left 10 feet or something catastrophic will happen. It's very simplified, but that's the, the only reason that jumps to my mind as to why collaboration is not going to make an outcome better purely from a timeliness factor. So what I hear you saying is that in an emergency, correct, yes. where you just don't have time to go through uh, the process of collaborating, then you are going to depend upon their respect for you that they will simply jump because you've asked them to jump because this is an emergency. Exactly. And having gone through and shown your desire to collaborate, the effectiveness of collaboration in the past, that builds trust with this group. So when you do need to make a unilateral, immediate decision, the group understands, hey, there's not enough time for it. My opinion, my perspective, my participation in the team is valued, that's where you've banked it early on by collaborating and showing that trust that you have with the group. That makes all the sense in the world. So 
just to kind of summarize here, it's like collaboration is important when a group needs to come together to accomplish the organization's goal, which is actually most of the time, and in, in, in fact, those emergencies where you would not need collaboration would actually be pretty rare. Is there anything else you would like to add to this, uh, to this conversation about collaboration? Michael, co collaboration is uh, one of the most difficult things to do because it requires engagement at a, both an individual and a group level. In order to best engage with people, you have to have activity outside of just the, the sole group collaboration too. So you can have the meeting that goes well, that has the collaboration piece to it, but you still need to have an individual one-on-one -on -one touch points with uh, each member with, uh, within the collaborative group. This allows folks with different uh, communication methods to engage and build that trust with you as the leader, and then that can help build the trust with the group. A lot of times folks will be a little uh, resistant of saying, hey, you know what, this, this doesn't really look right for the group. I actually don't concur on it. Some, some people can be uh, afraid to voice their opinion on it. But if you have these individual touch points, that's where the leader can better assess, hey, what's, what are you really thinking about too? To build that trust and respect uh, for each member of the group and allow them to, to fully participate. It, it's often difficult if you have uh, one person that can dominate the conversation and how do you get the other folks that are more quiet in nature, but still very insightful, engaged in the collaboration? Often a challenge that, that I like to undertake. To undertake. You know, what I find fascinating in what you've been talking about is that you have emphasized the, the need for individual contact as well as group contact. You know. Uh, I could not agree with you more. It, it's just that in my work with most organizations, the emphasis has to be the other way around, that the leader has put so much emphasis on working with their individuals that they really haven't spent time to build the team sense of collaboration, without which you just can't have collaboration. Super. I thank you for spending this time with us. Yeah. This has been good. We, we will have to do it again. Well, Michael, I enjoyed it too. I look forward to future conversations with you. Super.